Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, August 7th, 2017. I wanted to do a quick outlook, market outlook, um, just highlight a few things that I'm watching, uh, sectors or individual stocks, any trade ideas, anything that uh, may be of interest this week. Uh, we'll start out here with gold in the in the currencies, the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, focused a lot on the uh, the dollar index and the euro because that's where um, you know that that to a very large extent determines if and when and uh, and how much gold will break out and run. Uh, as I said, gold, particularly the miners, are setting up pretty bullish here. And um, we just have a little more work to be done. So in my recent analysis, I had mentioned the euro has had a, a heck of a run and against the dollar and being the high, largest component it's a, it's it's over half of the dollar index so that's why i'm tracking the euro us dollar pair uh either way you know it needed to come back in and it started to it started to have a little correction here's a 60 minute chart this is what this looks like this is pretty clear to me nice uh bearish rising wedge pattern and this was highlighted i believe last week we broke down and as is often the case that breakdown was impulsive we had a sharp move down we hit this uh this target right here, the support level, and bounced. Now, to me, uh, it, it could be over. Uh, I believe I might have already talked about that. If you look at the distance of the wedge, um, it, it certainly has come very close to meeting that projected move, adding, adding that distance of the wedge to where it broke down. Uh, so... But I, I, I'm leaning towards one other thrust down, really. I, I you know, I talked about this being mo most likely a pretty shallow and brief correction because of the bigger breakout in the euro. Again, check out my analysis from last week if you didn't. Uh, euro just broke out of a huge multi-year base basing pattern. Um, but just from look look at this chart, looking at the PPO rolling over, RSI turning back down, uh, I can envision another thrust. This looks like the first move down in the ABC corrective wave. So maybe we see something along the lines like this. You know, this is our A down here we have this little flagging type consolidation action and then maybe one more move down uh either way something i'll keep an eye for if the move is over then we'll, we'll have to adjust but uh we haven't had a breakout yet in the mining stocks uh, we'll look at gdx and uh you can again check out my analysis on gold that's that's also uh, been covered quite a bit last week uh here's that that nice bearish rising wedge pattern almost triangle type pattern but the most important thing is this downtrend line and um, you can see here that we've rolled off that so far um, after trying to you know, testing that line from you know for over a week from below failed so there's that uh, probably what will be in my opinion probably the last thrust down within that pattern before a breakout so uh, on this i may look to position within the pattern um for a breakout i mean if it got down back to the bottom of that pattern you can see there's horizontal support a slightly downward sloping trend line there uh, that would obviously be an objective buy if the charts still confirm at the time um, i don't think we'll get down that far it's possible so i'm looking to maybe buy somewhere in here and that's plan let's call that plan a plan b would be to uh if, if things turn around and let's say the euro continues to to rally against the dollar the dollar continues to fall you know, from the larger downtrend that it's in, uh, then this could break out any time. So be on alert. And of course, we'll need the charts of gold and silver to confirm. Here's the GDX 60 minute chart. Uh, you had this uptrend line here, uh, breakdown, pretty impulsive. So this looks like the first move down and a lot like the euro, here's a little flagging action. So again, maybe we see um, a little ABC type move down, A, B, C, little corrective action, and uh, this might be a nice buy zone here. You can see pretty decent support all along here. So anywhere um, around that area, maybe time to step in, and again, if the chart's confirmed. So that's that's those are the mining stocks, and um, that's usually my preferred trading proxy. But uh, again, there's gold, silver, platinum, other things that are also looking to shape up. Okay, we'll take a quick look at the broad markets. And, you know, there's always a lot of questions and everyone wants to know where the market's going. Um, you know, the trend is, as we know, been uh, extremely resilient. But there are these corrections along the way, pullbacks that are, you know, uh, very lucrative, lucrative for a swing trader if you want to trade those. Uh, if you're a dip buyer, sure, that's been working. But uh, you know, sooner or later, that's not going to stop 
that's going to stop working, I should say. Uh, you can see these divergences. They've been pointed out in the past, you know, divergent high, correction, divergent high. It, it, that's the story in the market. So we had a divergent high here, divergent high number one, and there was a correction. There was a decent little pullback, but this is an even larger divergence. So again, I'm, I'm on the daily chart here, and this is telling me that, hey, you know, this this next pullback may be along the lines of one of these deeper pullbacks, uh, as long as these divergences are in place. Now, if you're super bullish on the markets, you think we're going higher. If that happens, if if you know if we come in and take out these previous highs on the PPO and the RSI, then we burn through those divergences. But as of now, we still have negative divergence on the daily time frame of the Qs of the S&P 500, 60 minute. This is what I was covering last week. This is what I'm watching. Basically, we've had a, you know, we had this price channel, divergent high number one, divergent number, divergent high number two on this kickback rally after the channel broke down, and we've been consolidating here. And, um, you know, there was some, you know, comments in the trading room last week how frustrating it was. We saw a big move down, a snapback. Oh, it was maybe this day right here. We saw this move down. Well, that's just a move to the bottom of the range. And, you know, I stated before, we have to take out the bottom of this range with conviction. That means the, at least a 60-minute close, not one of these little intraday spikes like we've had here and here, but a uh, an impulsive break and or 60 minute close below that uh, consolidation area. That's what we need to see. And for the bullish case, you can see a gap right here. So I really should tell you that's probably about the, that's the high end where if we get an impulsive break above and or 60 minute close, then uh, we'll probably make another run at the highs, maybe even take those out. But as of now, trend indicators are still bearish. You know, this is uh, one trend indicator here, the 1333 EMA histogram the PPO below the zero line. So on the Qs, the trend indicators are bearish. And again, if you're trying to trade the market, meaning one of the broad market ETFs, it's going to be frustrating because we're in this consolidation range right here. But the outlook, you know, I still favor uh, a downside break of this based on everything in the charts. Uh, SPY, look for those of you that prefer trading the SPY, similar story, divergent high followed by a second divergent high on the 60 minute chart here. Trend indicators are whippy because we've been trading sideways since. Here's a minor uptrend line to watch. And, you know, new highs aren't that far away, but any new high at this point, let's let's just say that the S&P pushes up a little bit. Um, it will clearly be another divergent high. We can go up here and you can see these divergences will be extended. Uh, we can go up here in reverse. So, uh, you know, uh, another percent or two up in the S&P 500, even if it takes, a, you know, the, another week or two to do it, uh, in no way, shape or form negates any of these bearish developments. So that's not a new high that I'd be chasing. In fact, I would put good odds that that high would fail, you know, it, it, as long as all these divergences are in place. So that's a SPY 60 minute. There's a SPY daily chart. You can see the same thing, divergent highs, corrections, all the corrections are noted here, you know, six and a half percent drop, five and a half, almost four percent drop. And this is a pretty large divergent high, um, clear divergence. In fact, PPO is crossing over, making a bearish crossover. So, um, you know, it appears to me at least a pullback is imminent. When I say correction, I'm not talking the technical term of drop of 10% or more. I'm talking a you know, corrective action within this uptrend. But then you have this larger, much more significant downtrend line below. So this is the bigger picture, this bearish rising wedge pattern, this uptrend, uh, yeah, uptrend line, and this divergent high right here, this line I'm highlighting, that's a large bearish rising wedge. And if that breaks, you know, that would project down here to um, at least my minimum target of 20, uh, 232.50, and quite possibly this all the way down here to the 219, to call it 220 area. All right, that's the broad market. Now let's just look at a few trade ideas that stand out for the week. Um, some of these may have closed out, just kind of highlighting a couple trades because this will segue into the next one. This was AT&T uh, growth and income trade, which we did, um, you know, played out pretty quick. We bought it down here on support. Uh, you know, sometimes I wait to buy breakouts of falling wedges or other chart patterns. Sometimes I'll buy at the bottom of a pattern, especially if you're buying at support. Um, and, and that's what happened here. So that one was good for a quick pop. I don't know. It's a, whatever the exact gain was, it looks to be about 9%, nine percent, nine and a half percent or so. And this is why I have final targets. You can see we reversed to the penny. I mean, I had my actual resistance level there at 39.67. 
my targets set below to you know help avoid missing a fill and you can see there the high of the day the high, end of that rally was exactly where i had that line in advance at 3967 you know, all the way going back, you know, 9% below when we were at that support level. And that's where we reversed. Keep in mind, too, that the reason my price target isn't set there, you know, I always like to set targets to, because if a lot of eyes are watching a certain level, you're going to have a lot of sellers step in there. Uh, and sometimes it'll reverse early. Even if not, 39.67 was a high of the day. So most likely that was the ask price. That's where somebody that bought the stock was filled. If you had an order to sell, it probably would not have executed at 39.67 because the spreads on that stock, it's at and factory traded was probably a penny. So you would have probably, the highest sell order of the day, anybody that sold was probably 39.66. So um, hence, I just want to clarify that, you know, the resistance levels you see, uh, and the price targets, that's why they're, they're, um, they don't always line up and usually they're adjusted slightly below. So there is one we got out of quickly. Now that segues into the next one, you know, another communications provider, similar company is CenturyLink. I, I, you know, I think I, I get, don't think I had a stop listed. I have to check it on a daily close below. Uh, CenturyLink might've reported that day. And, you know, I often talk about this when stocks report earnings, um, there's almost always a initial knee jerk reaction in the pre-market and after hour session. And that what that does is create order imbalances at the open, either on the buy side or the sell side. So you see these quick things. If you look here, you see this candlestick wick is what I'm talking about. That probably ran the stop. And if it did, and that's what I stated, if I didn't put a daily close or modify anything on that trade, I'll update that. I'll, I'll stop that trade out and remove it, put it in the completed trades. But I, the reason I'm doing this coverage on it, it still looks good. This is still a, it's now back at the time it was unconfirmed now it's confirmed positive divergences at that low uh, we have another low here so we can we can do that as well we still have positive divergence or bullish divergence that was just a brief spike but we're back above that key support level to me that's pretty bullish price action that ran stops uh at the open and we close back above support and as long as we remain above this support line that's uh healthy and i think this one still looks good nice dividend i mentioned that's a growth and income stock i would put good odds at dividend event gets cut you know stocks rarely continue to yield uh, you know close to 10% in this market I don't think CenturyLink's going away anytime soon but uh, even if they cut that dividend by a third you still have an above average yielding stock and the potential for growth so I wanted to just say that for those of you still in the trade um, that it still looks good uh, for now and so if that was I believe it was an earnings induced gap keep the same stop if you pulled your stops that morning um, you know whatever the suggested stop on that is uh, a couple more uh, PEIX this one was posted in the trading room I'm sorry on the front page as a trade idea uh, just recently let me pull this up for you uh, this was yes this was the chart on July 21st one sec Okay, there it is, a cleaner copy. All right, it was a, what, a an unofficial trade setup. Um, those are the majority of the trade ideas because there's so many out there. And this one was, it, it, the chart looked like it had some work to be done. This is just an example. This one hit the target. You can see my sold price target is up here. These were, it was a, a, a former third target way back when uh, we had a monster trade on this one back in early 2016 and um, I said you know break of this downtrend line would be the trigger and it may need to come back down may not so I had a few different scenarios here but the most important thing is the breakout when the breakout occurs and we did break out in that stock and I want to make a point here that uh, uh, this is the one minute chart the breakout occurred it must have been an earnings induced gap i imagine or either that or news and it didn't i'm sorry it didn't gap up it opened up this is a one minute chart here's the daily close and then the next day we opened right about where we closed you can see we even went down a little bit at the open the following day and quickly went up and went up all the way in that uh that day we jumped up from the breakout point which is right about here 
that went all the way up to hit my first target almost to the penny for about a 20% gain. And the point showing the one minute chart was that uh, the trade was still, uh, you were still able to jump in there because it didn't uh, gap up 20%. It opened up, ran up through there. Now I missed it. And the reason I missed it, I didn't have a price alert on it. Uh, had I had a price alert, I would have had to move super quick. Now another way to trade these, and this really would help for those of you that don't have the luxury of being in front of the computer all day, um, you can set conditional orders. Um, for example, if you had a buy stop, which triggers you know a break above that downtrend line, you just take a look at where the level is. Uh, that would have triggered a buy order on that breakout as soon as prices crossed above that level, and um, OCU would have had a, also a sell order here. So conditional order says buy if this buy trigger is con met. Uh, whatever that trigger is, a buy over a certain price level, will buy on a trend line, depending on your trading platform, and then sell there. So it could have actually done that, uh, uh, got in, got that 20%, and then the stock fell right back. So it's just a more so, uh, you know, in hindsight, an example of technical analysis. Not so much hindsight, because that's the predicted move was to that price target, and the trigger was on a breakout. So uh, it just shows how quick some of these can play out. And again, I, that one, like I said, would have been hard to catch unless you had a buy stop order or you were in front of the market had it by you know uh, an alert set and then you jumped on it right away and um, you would also had to set your target ahead of time sell limit orders um, that's what i do because prices can hit those targets and reverse very quick um, next one up fls fsl flsr no fslr for solar, uh, this one was an official trade idea, did well. I've, I've shared this recently in the solar stock video. This one looks like a good short trade. Um, I'm in this one now. I may add it as an official trade. We have uh, the stock at resistance. This was a long-term target. Uh, pretty good price resistance, very overbought. And... Uh, it, we need the, if it would be nice to see a break of this trend line right here uh, that would trigger a sell signal for sure but you also have uh, some support right here there's a big gap right there uh, at the very least I think this gap is going to be backfilled and uh, my expectation for this one based on the scope of these divergences I think you know remember I was uber bullish on the solar stocks back here in April when they bottomed talking about the potential for explosive rallies and that's what happened at this point I'm yeah, I think that run at the very least needs a breather, and uh, it it uh, my swing target on this one. I think we're going to come back down to this former T3 level uh, somewhere in there, and I think that would be a, a good place to cover a swing trade. So maybe on these previous reaction highs, and again, this may be added as an official trade idea. I'm just still seeing the momentum hasn't completely left the solar sector, and that's that's my uh, reluctance here to add. Um, this is an official trade, but uh, if I start to see some more of these stocks, including First Solar, roll over. First Solar has not rolled over yet. It's you know, stalled out, but the trend is clearly uh, bullish for now. But this down here tells me that more than likely uh, that trend is, is it's losing momentum and it will uh, reverse soon. All right, a couple more. Um, IHI, medical device. This is an active trade on the site. Playing out as it should, very clean uptrend line, divergent high, rising wedge, double negative divergence, breakdown, impulsive move, and it's having a little kickback rally. So this looks to me to be nothing more than a, a bear flagging action. This is your flagpole, the initial move down. Here's your bear flag, and I'd expect this to come down if that flag plays out at least to that first support level. It's at 159. Uh, and ultimately work its way down to my first target here at 155, 153.55, which is set just above this uh, support level there at 152.51. Uh, so still looking good. Uh, like I said, maybe a little more upside left in that flag, so it might you know continue up for the next day or two here. Uh, I uh, that was IHI, uh, TSCO, Tractor Supply Company. This is a, an active long uh, long trade idea. Beautiful falling wedge pattern, strong divergences, double positive divergences, just like I talked about those double negative divergences a minute ago. You know, we had a divergent low here, and that was followed by a rally, a nice, you know, you could have traded that divergent low. I wasn't watching the stock at the time. 
Uh, that was about a 12% gain. So now here's a story. We put in another divergent low, and so far off that low, this stock has already rallied about 17%. And when I zoom in, what I see is a nice, um, you know, just beautiful technical action so far, beautiful price action. There's that wedge. The breakout was impulsive. The move since was impulsive. This is a bull flag pattern, and we have since broken out of the bull flag. So I expect we had just missed my second target by a hair, if I'm not mistaken. Did we already hit that? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. We hit T2, and we pulled back. And that's, again, why we have these different price targets. So it was a reaction there. Uh, so I expect... Um, the next test of that level will probably break on through and continue up to that third target level. So there's uh, uh, still plenty of meat left on the bone on this one, about another 8% or so upside. And PRGO, they're not all good here. This one was recently stopped out. It looked good. It looked promising. Divergent low, and it did start to play out, but it, it was struggling with this resistance level that I mentioned, and we just got hit. Our stop was hit, stop below 68, uh, 68.90, and that was taken out uh, late last week. So I'll remove that one. I'll post an update on the front page and take it off soon. XHB, uh, this one's not it's not really doing much so far. We're right about, we shorted on here. I think either just, I think I shorted in anticipation of a break of this uh, uptrend line, this bearish rising wedge. And it did break, but the price action has not been impulsive yet. Um, in fact, we're hovering above this S1 level. So what we're doing is we're back testing the wedge, the uptrend line. And I still like this one. Uh, it has a little work to be done and stops i don't know if i'm going to revise that stop or not if i do uh, it'll be because i may add this target i'm going to go through the individual components uh, one of which you know remember the home builder etf has anything home building related like home depot and lowe's home improvement stores sherwin williams here's one of our official trades this one is what I expect at XHB and all the other home builders to follow suit. Here's Sherwin Williams. You know, it's had a beautiful move down. Hit these, took out both these support levels. A little consolidation. We reversed just shy. I might have been a little aggressive on my price target there. 331.10. I had set the target at at 331.10. I'm sorry, and it went to a low of 331.68. Uh, so on a 300. In $30 stock, we're talking mere basis points, you know, fraction of a percentage point we missed that target by so far. Um, but this is bearish. We're we're now the trend indicators uh, below the PPOs below zero. We are oversold, but oversold can become more oversold. So uh, I'll, I'll keep that target as is for now. But if you're in the trade and you want to book profits, you're not far from it right now. But I do expect, even if there's a kickback rally here, I expect a continued move down to at least that uh, final target there at 317.35. That's the current official final target. Um... Finally, commodities. Um, the commodities are looking good. We've had some, I mean, I've had a lot of, I've been highlighting those. There's so many, especially the agricultural commodities that uh, I can't list them all as, as official trades. Too much to track, but here's one I'm watching now. Um, th these are wheat futures. This is a uh, hourly chart, 60 minute chart. And you can see just a nice clean downtrend line positive divergence, looks a falling wedge pattern. Um, so I think it's time to cycle back into wheat. If you trade wheat futures, those are, you know, contract CW. If you're an ETF trader, let's go take a look at the charts on wheat. Uh, there was a potential long-term target. This was an official trade. We took it all the way up here. Um, that final target at 770 was hit. Beautiful, you know, beautiful bottoming action here. Falling wedge, divergent low, uh, everything you like to see. And, you know, I had warned at the time, I did a video expecting a pullback in the commodities and most of these ag commodities. Again, they all have their individual um, unique dynamics, you know, corn, soybean, wheat, um, cocoa, they're all grown in different parts of the world, different regions have different you know, factors affecting the crops. 
So you, you can't lump them all together. You can trade the JJG, the grain ETF, but uh, I like to just kind of hit and run on the individual commodities. So where I'm going with this is wheat looks to be uh, time to recycle back into there. Uh, in fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll just pause. I'll stop this video here and I'll do a separate update on the commodities. Uh, I didn't want this video to go as long as it did. So let's wrap it up here and uh, I'll do separate uh, static post or video coverage because there's quite a few commodities that look compelling right now as uh, trade ideas for the week. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart.